Well, it turns out we might have some new information here on the Nintendo Switch 2. This is a leak coming from different data, shipping materials, all of that. So this is the sort of data that has turned out to be fairly accurate over you know a long period of time. This is not your typical, oh, well, so-and-so is saying that it might have this or it could be as powerful as that. No, 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 no. This is actual data that's relevant, some brand new information. It's the same way we found out that Nintendo Switch 2 will have 12 gigabytes of RAM. Now, where are we getting all this information from? Well, we'll dive into that in a moment. Just want to remind you, if you're enjoying all of this stuff about Nintendo Switch 2 and you want to stay up to date on everything, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, drop a like on the video, and comment down below what excites you the most about the next Nintendo platform. So we're going to go ahead and head on over here to Nintendo Universo or Universal Nintendo, whichever way you want to say it. It's a Portuguese website ran by Necrofolipa Lima, and he got this information technically over at Famiboards, but it's in a hidden post, I believe. So we're just going to rely on his article here uh, out of respect for Famiboards. It says Nintendo Switch successor may feature a 60-watt charger and dedicated cooler in the dock. And this is the second time, by the way, we've talked about the possibility of there actually being a dedicated fan and cooling system in the dock itself. And we'll talk about why that matters. But it says new listings of materials sent between factories and assemblers brought small revelations. So it says, since the official announcement of the existence of a successor to the Nintendo Switch in March of this year, Nintendo has not officially commented on its next video game, which is due to be released in 2025. I think he meant video game system. The various pieces of information that are speculated or found regarding the device were the result of data mining, leaks from NVIDIA, and more recently, the exchange of public information about shipments of parts between factories and assemblers, mainly around Asia. In yet another monthly report for these submissions, Users LIC and Luigi Blood Famiboards Forum brought to light small new tips for some technical issues that should be part of Nintendo's new console, a more powerful charger. The current Nintendo Switch has a USB-C charger that has a maximum power of about 36 watts, where there is a limitation so that the system does not consume more than 19 watts for distribution between charging, providing additional power to the dock, USB ports, etc. In the exchange of data between manufacturers, references were found for a 60 watt charger in its power, where it is believed it can allow a higher clock, and so that Nintendo may even improve the console's charging to a fast charge model if it adapts the use of GAN technology important in current chargers for cell phones and notebooks that promise greater efficiency and speed with each charge. The manufacturer responsible for the charger would be the same responsible for the version pre present in the current Nintendo Switch, Delta Electronics. And we'll stop there. We'll get into the cooler in a moment. But I want to focus on this charger for a second because the idea of the charger, obviously fast charging is something we would all welcome, but it's to allow it to actually draw a greater wattage. So you saw that it was sort of limited to drawing 19 watts, leaving a little headroom. And yeah, that's fine. That's normal. It allowed it to charge and power and all this stuff. Well, a 60 watt charger in theory could potentially allow up to that 36 or 40 watts to be drawn while the system is charging and in use, allowing for a much higher, you know, wattage output for more power. That's really the idea here. And obviously fast charging on top. So that's just exciting because it shows that the new switch should be drawing more power, which Typically, we want things to be super power efficient, you know, but like things like the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X are fairly power efficient for what they are, but they obviously draw a significant wattage to have that power. Well, what's exciting about there being a higher wattage, although, you know, right in line with phones and stuff like that with a 60 watt charger, is that it does allow higher clocks, more powerful chip. That's what we're talking about here. All right, so let's get into the rest of the article where we're talking about the cooling system that actually supports this idea that they would be drawing more watts. So still a much bigger unknown than the charger that has already clearer statements about it is its use with the new system. One of the doubts remains about the data found in the presence of a potential new cooler fan in addition to the one already present inside the hybrid. With a slightly smaller size, it is believed that it could be part of the console's dock, justifying the use of a more powerful charger and facilitating the cooling of the entire ecosystem 
during the charging slash power supply phase or more assiduous use of the technology part that ends up generating more heat. It is not yet possible to precisely define both pieces of information, but the probability of them already being definitive is extremely high, given that the manufacturers themselves and those hired by Nintendo are the sources. So that's what we're talking about. This data is real data, and it's hard to really pinpoint that it would be for anything else other than Nintendo, given that all the information is literally Nintendo's manufacturing and assembly partners. Now, what I find really interesting about the cooling fan, and I talked about it before, like how can an external cooling fan really help? Because you guys might know like all those weird cooling fan accessories you could buy for your consoles and how like testing shows they really don't make any difference at all. So how can an external cooling fan help? Well, that's different because those devices weren't designed to have external cooling blowing in through little tiny holes. A design like this could actually include touch points at the bottom of your system that could have like, you know, little, little copper indents that could touch copper outputs that could end up creating a heat exchange through a couple of copper heat pipes that could go into a heat sink in the thing, uh, you know, dock that could have its own cooling system. That's right. There are actually things that are designed intentionally for external coolers to provide extra cooling to a system. This is not actually a new concept. It's just not something that's ever really been popularized in the use of a standard gaming console. So if Nintendo went with that solution, that would be fascinating because that means Nintendo feels like the system needs to have additional cooling when it's in docked mode. Why? Because it's probably trying to push as much power as possible, but you still need to keep the system cool enough that when people undock it, it's not uncomfortable to hold in your hand. And this might have been Nintendo's solution to it. There's other things they could do and maybe have done. We don't know. Are they using vapor chamber cooling as an example? That could be one of the options they're doing. But I do find it quite interesting that this seems to be building up more and more and more evidence that there is some sort of cooling system in the dock. Now, again, this cooling system could just be for things like development kits or something like that. If they happen to provide a, de a development kit that lets you undock and redock, oftentimes like development kits don't really do that it's just one unit with different profiles with a giant cord coming off it but who knows what's going to happen in this case maybe these dev kits could have a more advanced system at play here or this is just for retail and we're going to see it obviously the most exciting part of today's news is the fact that a 60 watt charger not confirmed to be a gan charger yet but would be really interesting if it was because quick charging would be something really fascinating it is also nice to see that, hey, the system could actually draw a decent amount of wattage in docked mode, which would suggest that it's a fairly powerful chip. And if you're going to compete with something like that Xbox Series S in terms of power output, even if that requires the use of DLSS, you're still going to need some extra power to be able to do that. Again, you can see, you know, laptops that use, you know, decent power that are pretty efficient. They can output some cool stuff. So, I'm just really excited by the prospect of what this all means. Obviously, the Nintendo Switch 2 has not yet been publicly revealed. It has been publicly unveiled to exist, known as the Nintendo Switch successor. And yes, just to remind you, according to Shintaro Furukawa, Nintendo's president and CEO, he threw out there, hey, we will have an announcement related to the Nintendo Switch successor before the end of this fiscal year. Ends in March of 2025. So the countdown's on. We're probably seeing this thing well, likely, definitely seeing this thing sometime in the next, gosh, it's August already, man. So September, October, November, December, January, February, March, seven months. Sometime in the next seven months. All right, guys, catch you in the next video.